Hallelujah. What a blessing to be back in, in Dublin. Glory to God. We also have a, a, a live audience, you know, all nations, all nations are watching us. Why don't we give the live audience from all over the world a, a, a big God bless you, amen? Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. There you go. You know, yesterday morning, as Pastor John said, we had the, uh, we had the men's meeting in the morning, and we had somebody watching from Japan. It was a pastor from Japan. How great is that? Amen? But yes, yeah, so um, again, it's great to be back. Um, for those of you that don't know me and my wife, Dana, we are uh, from Texas, although originally I'm not from Texas. You know, with that name, I couldn't be from Texas, right? <laughs> You know, one day, one time I was at a sporting event in, in, in Texas, and uh, this guy asked me, he said, where are you from? I said, I'm from Japan. He said, oh, wow. He read my name. He read my name, and he, you could tell I wasn't from, from, from Texas, right? He goes, oh, what was your name? Oh, where are you from? I said, I'm from Japan. He goes, oh, okay. He believed it. Now, come on. <laughs> I'm not from Japan. Uh, but no, yes, I'm not originally from Texas. I'm from, from Italy, and... Um, and, uh, but God moved me to Texas 22 years ago. I left my country, just like your pastor did, and we met in Texas to go to Bible school. He left Ireland, I left Italy. And um, we met there, and we were roommates, so we had a, a fighting Irish and an Italian stallion <laughs> in the same house, and, and, and for a minute, things were not as, as, uh, as smooth um, you know, let's say that we, we were not on the same channel, but, but God knew how to fix that, and, and he did it in an amazing way, and, uh, you know, once I was trying to be nice to your pastor, and I said, you know, I'm going to cook after Bible school. We went back to the house, and I said, I'm going to cook some food. You, would, you, would you like me to, you know, make some for you? He said, yeah, sure. So I made some pasta with, with fresh diced tomatoes, and it was nice. I thought so. And so, you know, I prepared, and I put it on the table, so he sits down, and, and um, so he starts eating, and, and I could tell something was going on. You know, one thing about your pastor is he can't hide anything. <laughs> if, you know, if you know him, listen, in a court of law, he would be in trouble. <laughs> I mean, he would be guilty, like, just like that, right? So anyways, uh, so I could tell his face, I mean, it's changing colors, and his eyes are popping out, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, what, what now, right? I said, listen, you know, if you don't like it, you don't have to eat it. It went, Whoa. just like that. I'm like, okay, I will not cook for you ever again. So that was my last time I ever cooked for him. But no, you know, in a, in a, in a, on a serious note, um, God supernaturally uh, bonded our hearts. I remember one day as, as he and I were driving together to go to a church service, we walked through the doors of the church, and that, and that moment as we walked through these doors, we felt something come upon I felt it. We weren't speaking. We were just walking next to each other, going through the door. As we were walking through the doors into the sanctuary of the church, I felt like fire come on me. And I stopped, and I looked at him, and he did the exact same thing. We both at the same time experienced the same thing, and we knew something powerful was taking place. And from that moment on, we, we became blood brothers. Amen? Amen. Yeah. By the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I told him the other day, you know, he was FaceTiming me. I was still in, in Houston, and, and he was with his mom down in Cary. And um, I said, you know, I said, we don't have the same mom, but we, we have the same dad. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so praise God. So that's where... That's where my love for this nation come, come from, and uh, of course, it's our second time here, and even more so now, because we've, we've materialized something that was in our spirit for so long, and uh, all through the process of this church being, being uh, born and, and growing, uh, we've, been, we've been with you guys in the spirit, and, and listen, what we see today, I heard these things and, and believed with your pastor and, and, and heard him say some of the things that we see today. Years ago, amen? And today, we're still two young kids dreaming big things in God. Amen? amen? amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, uh, and then yesterday evening, we had the, um, the uh, impact meeting with the young adults. Come on, young adults. How was it? Um, it's amazing that when you make room for the Lord... What can happen? 
You know, that's all it takes. And my wife and I, we both felt like, man, it feels like the upper room. Because it was just a group of people in one place with one, one accord, one desire, and that is to just experience Jesus. And, and I tell you what, Dana, Dana brought a powerful word. My wife, my wife, Dana, stand up, Dana. She is the, she's the reason why I'm in Texas, because my plan was to go back to Italy, which is much, much nicer. Sorry for you Texas folk, okay? Um, uh, but it's much nicer where I'm from. So, but because of her, of course, the, the plan changed. God had a different plan, and we, we, we stayed and, and all of that. But uh, so she brought a powerful word, and then I got up, and I started teaching right after her, and we kind of started flowing, and then the Holy Spirit started moving powerfully. People got healed. How many of you guys got healed last night? Huh? Wave your hand. Wave your hand. Wave your hand. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. In the men's meeting, people got healed too. The Lord just started moving and touching people and uh, prophetic words and, and all of that. It was just amazing. Amazing. Amen. Just the fire of God just fell in that place. And, um, and so it was just a good, a good thing to experience. Amen. Amen. And uh, today, I believe that the Lord has a, a word for us because I never go anywhere to just preach a message. I don't. I'm not one of those guys that have a, a, a repertoire and they just go through the pages and say, okay, what can I preach today? I don't do that. I just ask the Lord, you know, what, what, what does this place need? What do your people need? What is that you have for them? Amen? Because God will meet your need and he knows what you, what you have need of. Amen? So um, we're going to go on the word and we're going to learn a few things today. Amen? We're going to learn a few things. Are you guys ready to learn? Amen. I hope you I hope you come with uh, with a Bible and with a pen and a piece of paper if you have a if you're like me a little bit more advanced. Amen. That works too. You know, I was I was actually having a conversation with Pastor John uh, yesterday. You know, he was telling me you know I should use the paper Bible and I was telling me you, know, you should use an iPad. You know, as you know, some things haven't changed. We're still having a little you know a little confrontation. And I said, listen, when God first gave the word, it was written in stone. So no matter where it's written, it's going to work. Amen? So if you like it on paper, read it on paper. If you like it on the the iPad or whatever works, just praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you. And we give you all the glory and honor for the opportunity to be in this magnificent place called All Nations. Father, this international hub of faith where people come and go to, to, to hear, to receive, to be taught, to be equipped, empowered, and to go back to the nations. Lord, I thank you, and I praise you today that you will teach your people, you will speak to them by your spirit. Holy Spirit, you are the great teacher. Lord, I thank you that you will cause me to speak with the tongue of the learned, that I may have a word in in season for them that are weary, and that my tongue will be like the pen of a ready writer, Lord, in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, have your way, and I give you all praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go with me to uh, 1 John chapter 4. In verse 17, the title, of this message, the title of this message is called, As He Is. Normally, I don't give titles, but they asked me for a title, so there it is. As He Is. Amen? As He Is. And it's talking about Jesus here. 1 John chapter, um, chapter 4 and verse 17 says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness. Everybody say boldness. boldness. All right, so it's Sunday morning. It's not so early. We can get a little loud. Amen? Let's do it again. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness. Everybody say boldness. Boldness. Okay, one more time. Boldness. Boldness. All right, all right. So, I mean, yesterday my wife and I, um, after the, the morning service, went to eat at a, uh, a place across the street from the hotel where we're staying. And um, as, uh, as we get in this place, it's, it looks like, I don't know if it's considered a pub. I don't know what it is. Kind of like a pub, you know. So we walk in there, every table has beers, everybody's drinking or whatever, but there's food. We didn't go to drink, went to eat, and there was nothing else around. So we went in there, but what, what, what caught my attention is that there was a sign on, on, top of the, uh, on top of the door, right? And it said, for the sake of safety, please no dancing. And I thought, that's a strange sign. Why would they write? And then, I, and then, and then, and then I, it kind of connected, right? I said, you know what? Here's all these people drinking here. And most likely, at some point, people are going to start getting stupid. Amen? They're going to start getting wild, start dancing, and go crazy, and do crazy things, right? And I was like, you know, I told Pastor John, I said, you know, there should be a sign in the church that, you know, for the sake of of, of freedom, 
Go ahead and dance. Go ahead and shout. Go ahead and scream. You know, just like Pastor Joanna earlier, what she was doing is very, very spiritual. Amen? Amen. For the sake of freedom, go ahead and just release yourself into the spirit realm. Amen? Speak, shout, scream, run, dance. Hallelujah. You used to do that for the devil and didn't get anything out of it. You might as well just do it for God and you're going to get a whole lot out of it. Amen? Hallelujah. Pastor John mentioned that, you know, the walls are not going to come down until you start shouting. Amen? And we're going to learn some of these things this morning that uh, things don't happen until you start cooperating with heaven. You have to cooperate with heaven. It's not automatic and it's not all about God. By the way, I see my, my, my friend, Miss Jill, there. Hi, I hadn't seen you yet, so I'm glad to see you. Hallelujah. So, um, so let's go and read the scripture here one more time. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Think about this. The day of judgment is something a lot of people actually dread. You think about the day of judgment. Wow, what's going to happen to me? What, you know, you think it's going to be, it's going to be a, a pretty bad day, right? But the Bible says that for us, for us, in that day, we will have boldness. Because the reason why that in the day of judgment where many people will have to answer for their life, not so for the righteous, not so for the ones that have believed in Jesus and have been born again. Because the Bible says in the day of judgment, the righteous will be as bold as a lion. And why is that? Because the Bible says as he is, speaking of Jesus, because as he is, so are we in this world. This scripture is not for when you get to heaven. It's giving you a picture that in heaven, you will be able to walk as boldly as you should be walking on earth. Because as Jesus is bold in heaven as he was on earth, you should be as bold as Jesus on earth as he is in heaven. Come on, people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. Say it with me. As Jesus is, As Jesus so, am I so am I in this world. In this world. Right, here. right here. Right now. Right now. now, think of Jesus for a second. How is he? What is he capable of? Think of Jesus when he walked on the earth. See, when Jesus walked on the earth, he was an example. That's why the Bible calls him not the son of God, but the son of man. Because although he was 100% God, he was also 100% man. The Bible calls him the firstborn of many. The Bible says that he is the, 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 the last Adam. The first Adam messed up. The second Adam came to fix everything. Amen? And restore what was broken, what was lost. So when Jesus was walking on the earth, he was walking as a man, walking, walking in perfect relationship with the Father as we should be. Amen? He was the example that we should look at and, and reference to as we should be living our life right here, right now. You say, is that possible? May, that may be a little extreme. Well, the Bible is very extreme. The Bible is an extreme book because God is an extreme God. Amen? 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 So... Today, we're going to learn a few things and maybe, maybe expand and, and, and enlarge our, our territories a little bit so that we can live the life that God wants us to live. Amen? You know, some people have bought into the, this demonic lie, really. That's what it is. Dressed up in religion, in, in, in traditions of men. And what that does is it robs you of all the, all the great things that the Lord has made available. You know? I, I like to, to kind of put it this way. You know, you're probably living a discounted version of what God created you to be. A cheaper version of what God created you to be. And you should not be. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So let's, uh, let's continue, and I have quite a few scriptures. It would take me really days to, to teach this as it deserves, but we're going to try to touch the focal points here. Uh, 
Okay, so Galatians 4.1, and we're going to build doctrine here. We're going to build something that is concrete, that, is, that you, can, you can build your faith, faith, faith on. Amen? You need the Word to build your faith on. Amen? You need the Word to build your faith on. You don't want to build your faith on what somebody says. You want to build your faith on what the Word says. So if I can't base what I'm saying on the Word, you cannot base your faith on what I say. But if I show you what the Bible says, then you can trust it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Galatians 4.1 says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, he differs nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. This is, this is an amazing, amazing scripture. Look at that. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, an immature person, someone who hasn't developed, has not grown up, as long as he is a child, he is no different from a slave. Now, th- look at the extreme of what he's talking about. An heir who owns everything and a slave who's in bondage and owns nothing. He is somebody else's property. Amen? This I say that an heir, as long as he's a child, he does not differ at all, at all, from a slave, although he is master or he is owner of everything. See, the devil is not concerned with you getting saved. You know, we think, oh, well, I'm, I'm saved. Glory, praise God. You know, you think that that's it. No, that's not it. It's not it. That's just the beginning. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The word seek is search to discover. It's like you going into a new country like many of you have done. But like an explorer that crosses the, 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 the border from one country into another, that word search, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is, is referencing not to a place, which is the kingdom of heaven. There's two types of kingdom the Bible talks about. There's the kingdom of, of heaven, which is the location that we will go one day. Then there is the kingdom of God, which is the, the system, is the, is the government. Amen? The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, how this government really works. Search to discover. That's what it means. Search to discover how the kingdom operates. And all these things then will be added unto you. In other words, the, the, the promises and what belongs to you will begin to, to show up in your life and line up with you as you search to discover how the kingdom operates. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So God has made us heirs, and we should not be as children immature, and certainly we don't want to live as slaves. So it's not up to God. Again, religion has, has taught us that, you know, it's all, we want to put all the responsibilities, we want to put all the pressure on him. And we pray things like, Lord, if it's your will, Lord, you know, whenever it's time. You, you can pray until you're blue in the face. Nothing will change. Because there are some things that he has called us to do in order to cooperate with the spirit realm. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 6.17. This, this kind of latches on to the first scripture we read, that as he is, so are we in this world. We say, well, that's, that's an extreme scripture. How can it be that we are just as he is? You know, I mean, he is everything and all that. Well, look at this. It says, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Say it with me. He that is joined with the Lord is one spirit with him. Now say this. I am one spirit with Jesus. If Jesus is your Lord, you are one spirit with him. Hallelujah. That's pretty powerful. You know that the Holy Spirit in you is not just a second spirit living in you. The Holy Spirit and your spirit are one. Amen. You and Jesus are one. His spirit and your spirit and my spirit are one. So the Bible can support when it says that as he is, so are we in this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Let's carry on. Are you liking this so far? Is it building something? Yes, it is. It's making sense, isn't it? Now the lies of the devil start not making any sense anymore. 
Amen. All those stupid things that you've heard all your life, like, you know, uh, uh, well, if it's the God's will uh, or, you know, Lord, when it is your will in God's time and all that, and God is waiting on you, like, I wish you'd do something. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I wish you did something. Yeah. Glory to God. It is time that we begin to cooperate with heaven. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, Psalm 71, verse 41 it says, yes, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. When we, when we turn back and turn away from the word, from the truth, from what the Bible says, it happens exactly as it did for them, for the children of Israel. They turned away from what God said, and guess what happened? They limited. They limited the Holy One of Israel. You say, can God be limited? Let me, let me, let me tell you something. God is, God is not really as almighty as you think he is. You say, how can you say that? That's, that sounds sacrilegious. Well, if you understand what we're talking about, it's not. Because he can only be as almighty as you let him. He's the almighty if you allow him to be. He can do anything only if you let him. You know, there was one guy, one, one person that came to Jesus once in the, in the scripture, and he said, Lord, if you, if you can, cleanse me. What did Jesus say? He said, if you can believe. He said, if you can believe, it's not if I can do it. The question here, it's not if God can do it. The question really is, can you believe? Can you believe that I can do it? Isaiah 53 in verse 1 says, Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? So it's a question, right? Question upon question. And the answer should be, The arm of the Lord is revealed to them that believe in the arm of the Lord. The arm of the Lord, which is a manifestation, one of the three major manifestations of the Holy Spirit. In the Bible we have, speaking anatomically as as body parts, uh, we have the, the arm of the Lord, we have the hand of the Lord, and then we have the finger of God. Amen? And so the arm of the Lord, is it, it, it expresses God reaching, reaching out, reaching down to help. And the Bible says to who? So who has believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The arm of the Lord is revealed to those that believe the report of the Lord. Believe what the Bible says. Amen? Amen. If you don't believe what, what God says, you limit God. God cannot overstep his own word. So now he has put the responsibility and the action on our part to cooperate so that he can manifest himself, his life, his kingdom, his promises, his power in our life, in our area of influence, in our city, in our nation. So this doesn't apply just to you. We need to stop thinking about just us, and we need to think beyond just us. This is for our city. This is for our nation. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, we don't want to limit God, do we? Amen? We don't want to be the ones that limit God. You know, I say, Lord, I take off every limit. I remove every limitation. You say it, I believe it. Amen? You say it, I believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Psalm, Psalm 8, Psalm or Sam, you know, sorry, I'm, 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 I hate to say I'm American, but I'm American. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm, I'm an American citizen, and I've been there for so long, just about half of my life. So, uh, book of Psalm or Sam, it's there, right? About, about half away in the Bible. And, uh, and that's in uh, chapter 7, uh, excuse me, chapter 8, and we'll begin reading in verse 1. And uh, the Bible says, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him, what is man that you are mindful of him? There's another translation that says this. It says, what is man that you are constantly thinking about him? Another one says that it's always 
on your mind. You say, what, what does God do all the time? What does God do all, with, with, with his time? I mean, God that it just lives forever, always been and will always be, right? What does he do? He thinks about you. What is man that he's mindful of him? And the son of man that you should visit him. So what's in God's mind, it's you, it's me, it's us, it's people. Amen? For you have made him a little lower than the angels. How many of you have ever read that scripture? For you have made him a little lower than the angels. Well, that word angels in the original, so in the Hebrew here, and also this scripture, we found a reference mentioned by the writer of Hebrews uh, referencing to the same scripture. And that's in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. And you can, you can make note of that and go read it later. But it says here, For you have made him a little lower than the angels. So in Hebrew, also in Greek, the two languages that God chose to write the Bible, the Old, the Old Testament, New Testament, are incredible or amazing languages because both languages are very complex. One word has many meanings and many applications and many ramifications. It's not just... Uh, like English or maybe Italian for me, which is my nat nat native language or whatever your native language would be. So it's very complex. So the, the, the translator felt so scared to write what it really means that he chose a lower or lesser application yet accepted for that word. The word angels is the word Elohim. What does the word Elohim mean? It's God, or the unlimited God in its essence. So, let's read this again. The Bible says, For you have made him a little lower than God Almighty. Amen? So we take that word angels out, because it's really not the appropriate word. The word angel is chosen as, as the word also messenger, but that's not it. The word angels here in the, in the Hebrew is the word Elohim, which means also angels and messenger, but in its primary meaning is the word Elohim, which is God. So what's man that, that you are mindful of him and the, and the son of man that you should visit him? For you have made him just a little lower than Elohim. You've made him a little lower than yourself. Hello? I would start getting excited if I were you. For you have made him just a little lower than yourself. You've made him just a little lower than God. What did God say in Genesis chapter, chapter 1, verse 26? Let us make men in our own image and after our own likeness. And let them have dominion. Hallelujah. He said it. I didn't say that. He said it. Amen? He said, let us make men after our own image and our own likeness. That's God's plan. That's God's design. You say, well, well, that was in the beginning. Then, then the sin, you know, then the, and the sin came, and then it was all lost. Yeah, but Jesus went and got it back. That's why it says, as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we in this world right now. Amen? Because if you're joined with him, you are one spirit with him. You are one spirit with Elohim. You're one spirit with God. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. So for you have made him a little lower than, than God, than Elohim, and have crowned him with glory and honor. Hallelujah. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. That was what we saw in Genesis. And you have put all things under his feet. Amen? He said, well, he was talking about Jesus. Well, let's, 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 let's go see what, what Jesus is talking about. You want to see that? You want to see that it's not just talking about Jesus? Huh? Do you? Come on, do you? All right, go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Hallelujah. I love the word. I don't know about you, but I love it. I just love to devour it. I love to just search it. I love to dig in it. Amen. Praise God, because it's just a wealth of, of treasures. It's just an, 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 an inexhaustible source of, of riches, praise God. Hallelujah. So the Bible says the just shall live by faith. You can't live without faith. And faith is life to us. You can live because of faith. The Bible doesn't say the just shall die by faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Amen? And faith only comes by, by one thing, by, by hearing the word of God. 
So let's, let's read this um, starting in verse 18. So Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, Paul is teaching here. It's one of the famous prayers. It says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You know, I pray this every day. I pray this every day. Lord, I thank you that the eyes of my understanding are open, are enlightened by you, by your spirit, by your word. And I know what is the hope of your calling, what are the riches of your inheritance with the saints that I have. And I also know what is the exceeding greatness of your power to us, me, who believe. The same power that you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. It's pretty powerful, isn't it? Amen? Watch this. It says, which he wrought in Christ. So let's go back. Let's back up a little bit. Let's start again. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know the hope of his calling. God wants you to find out what's his will for your life. God's plan is not for you to wish, oh, you know, whatever God's will is. No, no, no. God wants you to receive the spirit of wisdom so that you can know for you, for your life, and for where God has called you to be, what his will is for you. There is an individual will for your life. Then there is a corporate will for, for where God has called you to be. For example, all nations church, God has joined to this place. So there is a personal will for you as a person. Then there is a corporate will for everybody in this place. Amen. For what God has called us together to work together, join together for the plan of God for Dublin and for Ireland and for the nations. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So... It says that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know the hope of his calling. What are the riches? Everybody say riches. It didn't say the miseries. It didn't say the, the struggles. Amen. It says the riches, that you may know what are the riches of your inheritance. You know, we talked about earlier that an heir, even though he's Lord of all, if he's a child, if he's somebody who's not mature, growing up, developed in the things of God, he's no different than a slave. Though he be Lord of all, owner of all, master of all. That's pretty sad to live like that, isn't it? I don't want to live like that. Hallelujah. I don't want to live like that. I don't live like that. Amen? So that, that, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power Toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. It's the same power that he wrought in Christ when, when he raised him from the dead. So watch this. There is an exceeding greatness of his power that he wants you to know how it works, how to tap into it, how to operate in it, to make it work in, in your life and through your life. And he says, this is not just, uh, just another power. It's not just regular. This is the same power. He calls it exceeding greatness of his power. Now, if he would have said power, it would have been enough for me. If he would have said greatness of his power, it would have been more than enough for me. But he says exceeding greatness of his power. Amen. See, let me, let, me, let, me, let me say something to you. Actually, I'll, I'll talk about it later. The exceeding greatness of his power, and then he goes on to explain what this is. It's the same power... You think that, oh, you know, God released the, great, the, the greatness of his power when he created everything. No, he didn't. When God created the universe, Genesis 1, right, and we have a whole description there, that's not when he actually had to use all of the power that he has at his disposal. That's not, that, that wasn't necessary. That was in the beginning. God spoke, boom, and there was light. Simple. Very easy. But the Bible says that when it was time to raise Jesus from the dead, he had to release the exceeding greatness of his power. Now the Bible tells us, he reveals to us, that for us to believe, he has at our disposal the exceeding greatness of his power. The same power that he had to release when he had to raise Jesus from the dead is the same power that he wants you to know, he wants you to understand, and he wants you to tap into and use. Listen, the devil doesn't stand a chance if you find out about it. That's why, like I said earlier, he could care less you get saved. He's not troubled by that. You think he's scared that you get saved? No, he's not. When he's troubled is that when you find out who you are in Christ, 
which you, when you find out what he has done for you, when you find out what he has made available for you, when you find out how to take your place, when you find out how to, how to access all of these things and how to begin to use what you have in Christ, and you begin to claim territory back. You begin to take your health back. You begin to take your mind back. You begin to take your, 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 your business back, your money back. You begin to take your family back. You begin to take your territory back. You begin to claim the city back. You begin to claim the nation back. And then he, he starts, starts to, 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 to freak out. Because as you advance, he has to regress he has to go back he has so basically as you as you possess territories he's losing territories he thinks he is the god of this world he's not jesus is the god of this world and you are the god of this world with him for as he is so are we in this world hallelujah praise god so And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us or to believe that according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him on high at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities. He's talking about Jesus here. Okay? He's talking about Jesus. So it's the same power when he raised, this is what he makes available to you and I that believe. The same power that he wrought in Christ when, you raised him, when he raised him from the dead and set him on high at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and all power. And all might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And he has put all things under his feet. Whose feet? Jesus' feet, right? Okay? You say, well, how does it tie to what you were talking about a second ago in the book of, book of Psalm that you said that everything was under our feet? Well, wait a second. We're getting there. And he has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Say, that's me. Which is his body. Say, that's me. Which is the fullness of him that fills all in all. You and I are the body of Christ. We are one spirit with him and we are the body of Christ. He is the head over all things that God made over everything, gave him a name that is above everything, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. But he gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, and it's the fullness. Who's the fullness? Jesus? The head? Nope. The fullness is in the body. The fullness of him that fills all in all. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. That is, that, this, this, is just, this is just pure gold. Because if you get a hold of what I'm talking to you about, you will not live defeated anymore. The devil will think twice before you come knocking on your door. You know, it's a lot easier to fight a weak one than to fight a strong one. If you're going to pick a fight, fight with somebody who's weaker than you, not stronger than you. Right? Amen. If you're going to fight, you're going to size somebody up say, well, what should I say, run or swing? And th that depends a lot of times on who, you, who, you, who you're facing, right? So, you know, if he has to face you and you know who you are in Christ, he's not going to mess with you. He's not going to mess with you. The Bible says my people perish because of what? It doesn't say the world perish. They perish already. They're already perishing. But the church... The people of God are victims because of lack of knowledge. But we are not created to be victims. We're created to be victors. Amen. Hallelujah. We're created to be victors. Amen? Amen. Praise God. You liking this? Yes. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Matthew Actually, before we go to Matthew, let's go to, let's go to Psalm 115, verse 16. It says, The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth, he has given it to the children of men. Who did he give it to? 
Who did he give it to? Come on. Who did God give the earth to? To us, to the children of men. That's us. Amen? The earth is the, the heaven is the Lord, but the earth, he has given it to us. Amen? Does it say that or not? Yes. That word given is the word Nathan, like the name Nathan. It means given, right? It means, this, it means to set, to appoint, to assign, to, de- to designate, to bestow, to deliver, and to restore. So we can read the scripture like this. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has appointed unto the children of men. Or he has, he has assigned it unto the children of men. Or he has designated it to the children of men. Also, he has bestowed it upon the children of men. Or he has delivered it unto the children of men. Or to finish, he has restored it unto the children of men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1 says, And when, the, when he, Jesus, had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power. Say power. power. He gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all matter of sickness and all matter of disease. Say all. all. Is there anything excluded from that? Anything excluded? Any clause, any, any section here that says otherwise? No. No. He called them and he gave them power. That word power is the word authority. Amen? He gave them power. He gave them authority against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all matter of sickness and all matter of disease among the people. Praise God. And the Bible says in verse 7, and as you go preach saying, you have to say some things. How do you activate the kingdom? By speaking. How do you activate faith? By speaking. Somebody said the other day, I was listening. I forget who I was listening to. We were listening together. Uh, oh, it was, it was uh, a preacher from America. He said, the kingdom is voice activated. I thought it was cool. It's voice activated. You know, there are devices today that are voice activated. You can call, say, I can call my phone and say, hey, Siri, and she just turns on. How many of you guys have an iPhone? How many of you guys have an iPhone? Come on, wave at me. How many of you guys have an iPhone? How many of you guys should have an iPhone? <laughs> How many of you guys are believing for an iPhone? Let me see your hand. There you go. She's honest. There you go. In Jesus' name, you'll get an iPhone, too, if you want it. And just begin to claim it, right? So, you know, you, I can say my phone is sitting down because basically it's telling me, you know, if you want to set it up like this, you just don't even have to touch it. You just sit there, and you just talk to it. And I say, hey, Siri, what's the weather going to be today? And she starts talking. Right? The kingdom works like that. If you want the kingdom to respond, you have to start talking to it. You have to start saying some things. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Glory, hallelujah. As you go say the, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received and freely give. Now, who's the, who's the responsibility on? Who's, who's, who's to be to do the healing? Who's to be doing the, the casting out? Who's to be doing the cleansing and all that kind of thing? Who, is, who, who did he say is supposed to do this? See, we're praying, God, oh, heal this. Oh, Lord, move here. Lord, you know, uh, 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 do this and do that. And Lord, we're constantly telling the Lord to do stuff. And he's been spending a lifetime. He's been st- spending the last couple of thousand years telling us that it's us that are supposed to do some things. He said, you go and cast out devils. You go and, and heal the sick. You go and cleanse the lepers. You go and take authority. You go and claim the territory. You go. You do it. You do it. You it's you. It's you. It's you. Amen? Amen? He gave you power. He gave me power. See, if you don't know it, you can't do it. But the moment you learn that from the scripture, now you have to do something with it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We're learning something. Yes. Praise God. So let's go to Matthew chapter 16. And in verse 15, it says, And he said unto them, By whom? Whom they say that I am? And, 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 Peter, and Simon Peter answered and said, You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood, and I reveal this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock, and that's where, that's where you know, the Catholic Church missed it, because they thought, you know, upon Peter, I'm going to build my church. But it's not upon Peter. It's upon the revelation that Peter had. 
Upon this rock, upon this revelation of who Jesus is, you are the Christ, you're the son of the living God. You are the Messiah. Amen? He is the solid rock on which the church is built. That deserved a much better amen than that. Come on. One more time. He is the solid rock on which the church is built on. Hallelujah. Amen? And it says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said, you are blessed for flesh and blood and not reveal this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock, upon this revelation of who I am, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Watch this. And I will give unto you the keys to the kingdom. The keys to the kingdom. And whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You know, that word binding is the word for allowing. If you, if you read in the Greek, the original, it, it, it has obviously many definitions. And one of them is, is allowing. So you can read that whatever you allow on earth will be allowed by heaven. And whatever you don't allow on earth will not be allowed by heaven. In other words, heaven can only back what you say and what you do and what you believe. God said to the children of Israel once, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. Because they kept on murmuring and kept on doing. So he said, you know what? I can't help you. Whatever you say is what I can do for you. Amen? Amen? Jesus said, upon this rock of who I am, I will build my church. That's us, the body, his body. We're built on that. Okay? And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys. Keys, keys represent authority. If you have, how many of you guys have, you know, like a, like a big key, key, key uh, ring with a bunch of keys in it? Any of you? These days are not as popular. You know, I remember growing up and my dad had like, you know, a big old thing. He, sometimes he'll throw it at you to just knock you down. It's that big. <laughs> I mean, it's just keys everywhere. I mean, he looked like it was King Arthur. I mean, he had like, <laughs> but, but keys represent, you know, it means that you have access. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. Keys represent you have access. You have, to, you have authority to go into places because those places belong to you. You don't have a key unless you have, you have ownership. So keys represent ownership. They represent dominion. They represent authority. If you have keys, the more keys you own, the more things you own. Amen. And I will give you authority. I will give you dominion. I will give you access. I will give you permission. And whatever you bind on earth, whatever you loose on earth, it's whatever you do. It's whatever you do. It's whatever you do. It's whatever you do. So it's time that instead of praying, oh, Lord, you know, can't you see? Oh, Lord, can't you hear? And God in heaven says, yeah, I can see and I can hear. <laughs> Amen? You start taking authority. You start taking authority. You take authority over things. Amen. You start binding things that don't belong in heaven, and therefore they should not belong on earth. Yes. You know, if sickness is coming in your body and trying to attack your body, listen, it is your job to stop it. And you say, you know what? You are not, you're not you're the will of God in heaven, and therefore you're not the will of God on earth. And so I bind you on earth because you are bound in heaven. You are not allowed in, in heaven, and therefore you are not allowed on earth. I do not allow you in my body. And you say that, and you stand on that, and you stand on it, and you stand on it, and you stand on it until you see that thing leave. Hallelujah. See, the devil doesn't want you to realize that that actually works. But as you become more skilled, like the Bible says, skilled in the word of righteousness, as you become more skilled in the word, guess what happens? He's not going to mess with you as much because he knows that you know how it works. Amen? So Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed. Amen? So... There are things that we should allow, and there are things that we should not allow. There are things that we should open the door to. Like last night with the, with the young adults, we all got together with your pastors, and we just opened the door to the Holy Spirit. 
We open the door to the power of God. We open the door to the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We open the door to healing. We open the door to prophetic words. We open the door to, to, to restoration. Uh, we open the door to, to, to a, a divine time of uh, appointed time for, for what's happening here in Dublin, in Ireland. Hallelujah. And this is going to touch the world from here. Amen? Amen? So we open the door. How do we do that? With our faith. We did it with our faith. Amen? Amen? But there are things that you should recognize and say, you know what? I'm going to shut the door to this. This is not God. This is not the Lord. Amen? If you have somebody in your family that you see struggling with, with, with you know, addiction, drug, alcohol, whatever the, the case may be. You know, it could be women. It could be men. It could be whatever. It could be a sexual thing. It doesn't matter the nature of it. You know, instead of complaining, instead of calling it, oh, man, you know, you, this, this, this is bad. Oh, it's bad. And it's never going to change. Oh, I, I wonder what's going to happen to this person. You know what? Begin to bind some things. Begin to take authority. Begin to say, you know what? I bind this demonic spirit and I break the power of, 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 of addiction off of this person's life, off of my brother, my mother, my sister, my dad, whatever the case may be. You've seen things traveling through your family for generations. Listen, you know, you saw the, the, your, your, your great-great-grandfather, he was an alcoholic. And then, and then the next one in line was an alcoholic. And then your grandfather was an alcoholic. And your father was an alcoholic, an abuser, and all that. You see this, this thing just traveling down from generation to generation. Listen, if somebody had to open the door to that at some point. You were not created an alcoholic. You were not created to, to have cancer. You were not created to be, to be a victim. You were not created to be weak. You were not created to be in bondage. Nobody was ever created like that. At some point, somebody opened the door, but guess what? As somebody opened the door, someone else can shut the same door. You can shut that door. You can stop that, that weakness and that iniquity from traveling any further. You say, from now on, there is the blessing traveling in my, in my bloodline. From now on, there is divine health traveling in my body and, and everybody else that comes from off of me. Hallelujah. From now on, there is peace. From now on, there is freedom. There's not going to be any more addiction. There's not going to be any more abuse. There's not going to be any more of this nonsense. That's why I don't believe in this, this genetic junk. You go to the doctor, does your mother have this? Does your father have this? No. And even if they did, I would still say no. Because Jesus said, Jesus said I, I, I make all things new. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. See, the thing is, the thing is... Amen. Hello, let's give the Lord some praise. Amen. So listen, listen. So what, the, what they do, they don't realize this, but the devil has infiltrated the, the, the medical system because it's a big one. Okay. And, and so what happens is they want you to agree with a theology that has absolutely no basis. Because if that was true, it would mean that you could trace the, 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 the human race all the way back to Adam, and from Adam on, everybody was sick with that particular disease, and that's not the case. At what point does somebody mutate and have that in their body that then begins to travel down the line? It started somewhere. And they tell you, do, you, do, uh, do your parents have this? They want you, not, not, they want you for medical reasons, okay? So understand that. They want you for medical reasons, but the fact is the devil wants you to admit it so that he can have you. So that he can lock you into it. See, it belongs to you. You claimed it. It's in your family. Listen, I don't care what was in my family. There is a new family started from me on. There is a new generation. My genes have been muted at Calvary. My genes were modified. I'm genetically modified. And that happened at Calvary. When Jesus shed his blood, I was made a new creation. The Bible says a species of being that never existed before. There is no sickness in my body. There is no, there is no depression in my body. There is no fear in my body. There is no, there, none of that. There is no poverty traveling through my blood. None of that. If it's in the curse, it's not in me. And if the enemy tries to attack you, to try to convince you otherwise, you do what we're teaching you today. You do what you're taught in this church every Sunday and every Wednesday and every time the doors are open. Listen, this is an international hub of faith. This is what this church is. You come here, you're going to get life. You're going to learn the, 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 the secrets of the kingdom that you can operate in. Amen? 
And that's what we're doing. We're here to serve you. We're here to help you. We're here to build you up and to strengthen you so that you can come up one level and just begin to live the life that Jesus paid for. Listen, he's been trying to convince us for 2,000 years. It's time to believe. Amen? Amen. It's time to take hold of these things. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but I just get excited with this thing. You know, I was just married. We were just married. Dan and I were just married. We were about to celebrate 18 years this month. And, um, and so, yeah, praise God. Amen. I know we don't look that old, but we married very young. So uh, we were just married, and um, so we, we rented an apartment, and, we, um, and so we moved in, and, and that's it. So one day, we noticed that this guy moved next to us. And so basically, you go up the stairs, and there was one door on this side, and there was us, and there was a door on this side, and there was this guy that was just basically ran an apartment. So first night, you know, we hear, you know, in the middle of the night, we hear, like that. I'm like, what is this? I'm like, I said, Dana, the devil is in that room. What is that? I mean, it didn't even sound natural. I mean, it didn't sound like, like something that a human being could produce. I'm like, this is not good. So basically, our bedroom and the, and the headboard of our bed was against this wall, and the guy's headboard was against this wall. So he was basically head-to-head -head with us. And in Texas, unlike here and most of Europe, you know, they don't use, you know, concrete and all that. You know, they just use sheet rock, so it's very thin, and you can hear stuff, and it's, you know, it's not very soundproofing. So, I mean, this guy's just, I mean, as he's snoring, the, the, the sheet rock is vibrating. I mean, <laughs> like that. So one night, two nights, three nights, a week. I mean, it's bothering me because, I, I mean, I'm, we've been waking up at night. Am I telling the truth? And the guy was just a monster. I mean, he wasn't human. I mean, he was like, uh, this guy, like a transformer or something. I don't even know what he is. <laughs> Anyways, so several days went by. And one night, I just could not have it anymore. I mean, this guy is going, whoa, <laughs> whoa, like that. I'm like, oh, my gosh. So, I mean, I just woke up like that. I sat in bed, and I told Dan, I said, this guy has a demon. I turned around, I laid my hands on that she-rock, and I said, in the name of Jesus, you snoring devil, loose him. <laughs> Boom, he stopped. He stopped, and he never snored again in his, the whole time we were there. The guy got set free, and he doesn't even know how. He was delivered because of me. You know, it's a funny story, but it's a true story. And the fact is, it'll work if you use it. Amen? Hallelujah. So if you hear somebody, that, that, a neighbor that is not so cooperating, there you have a little, a little nugget. Amen? Well, why don't we all stand? Praise God. It's getting late, and why don't we all stand? Listen, when it comes to, when it comes to the... Um, when it comes to the, what we're doing here as a church, the same principle that we are learning about for some things that we can use personally, the same will apply as a ministry, the same will apply as a church, as a body of believers. You know, we're believing to take over the city and then the nation because the city is the heart of the nation. And so, you know, it's not so much for what we pray, and what we, obviously we pray, and we intercede, and we stand in a gap, and all that kind of thing, but then there is a time that we also have to take our place. We have to take our place, and we have to begin to claim territory, and we have to take authority and bind some things and lose some things and, and use the authority that God has given us. Amen? Listen, Ireland shall be saved. Ireland belongs to Jesus. You know, as we were singing earlier that beautiful song, and Pastor, Pastor John told me, he said, man, that's, that song is a thousand years old. It's an old Irish song. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, there's a new song coming. 
God is going to give us a new song for this nation. We need a new song for this nation. A new song. A new sound. Amen? I love the, the story of, and Pastor talked about it a minute ago. I love the story of Ezekiel when the Spirit brought him to the Valley of Dry Bones. And the, and the Spirit said to him, Ezekiel, what do you see? He said, I see a valley full of dry bones. And he says, and those bones are very dry. Now, valley of dry bones, that's bad. <laughs> it's, it's a cemetery and, and, and an empty one too, right? He says, and those bones are very dry. And, and God says to him, can these bones live? Amazing. Amazing. What? God interacting with us, wanting us to step into a role that, 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 that the enemy is trying to rob us from. Can these bones live? You may be looking at a circumstance in your own life and you say, man, you know, the devil is messing with your head and giving you thoughts and voices. There is no hope. There is no way out. There is no way this is going to change. There is no way you're going to get healed. There is no way you're going to get a better job. There is no way that the situation is going to change. But also... We can go outside of our own basic needs and our own personal needs and we can look at the, at the, at the, at the streets of Dublin and you can look and you can go uh, uh, down the center and you can look at all these uh, pubs full with people, you know, like me and my wife yesterday were in there, there's a lot of people drinking and stuff and you can say, man, how is this ever going to change? How is this can ever going to change? How is it possible? You know, revival doesn't happen just because. Miracles are not accidents. Miracles are divine appoint appointments. Uh, uh, they are planned with purpose. Miracles in the scripture, you'll see that never happen by accident. They're always initiated by somebody. Amen? And so, as far as us as a church here, you guys being a part of this ministry, your pastors, God has given them an assignment to take over this city and this nation because this nation belongs to Jesus. Come on, say amen to that. Amen. It deserves a better amen to that. Amen. Shout it out loud. Amen. amen. Yes. Amen. And so it is time for us, just like Ezekiel, he says, can these bones live? And he said, Lord, you know it because that's, that's what human nature and religion will teach you. Lord, what, whatever is your will, whatever you think, whatever you say. And God says, no. He says, you begin to prophesy. You begin to speak to these bones. You begin to say to these bones, the Spirit of God is going to come and blow over you, and you shall live again. And he began to do exactly what the Lord says, and next thing you know, these bones and flesh begin to come back. And, and blood started flowing again, and it stood up, and it says, and it was a, it was a mighty army. Amen. If you, if you walk out of these doors and you, when you look at the city, when you look at the nation, you say, oh, there is no hope. Listen, God can't work with that. But if you walk outside of here and you begin to speak, you see every pub you see, you say, Lord, there's thirsty people in there. They're just drinking the wrong stuff. Lord, I thank you that these people are becoming thirsty for you, that, 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 that when they taste alcohol, they're gonna, they're gonna, it's going to taste like poison in their, in their mouth. They're going to hate and They're going to begin to feel a drawing to you. They're going to begin to feel like a pulling. They're going to feel like they, they need to seek you and all that. When you begin, you begin to prophesy like that, you begin to speak like that, guess what's going to happen? The, 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 the winds are going to shift. The winds are going to shift. Hallelujah. You take authority over there. I bind the spirit of alcoholism in the name of Jesus. I bind that demon. I bind that principality in Jesus' name. That's how bondages are broken. That's how chains are broken. Hallelujah. It's by you releasing the anointing as you speak and as you prophesy and as you use the word and your authority. The Bible says in that day the anointing will destroy the yoke. Amen. Hallelujah. So I, I feel, I feel that, that we should just for a minute. I know it's, you know, maybe a few minutes past what you normally dismiss that. But we're, we're done. We're done. But as a church, can we pray for our, our city and our nation? Can we do that? Can we do that? Can we do that? Yes. Yes. Amen. If we if we can't uh, uh, if we can't believe for it, who will? If we can't intercede for it, who will? If we can't stand in the gap, who will? If we can't take the place of authority, who will? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Let's pray in the Spirit. For those of you that are, that are baptized in the Holy Spirit, let's pray, pray in the Holy Spirit for a minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's do it out loud. Boldly, 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 boldly. Let's do it in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.